حالا من ویدای که تا دیروز فرشاد بودم الان شدم ویدا همه منو به, به نحوی منو میبینن به همچنس باز میبینن هنو تو اجتماع جا نیفتاده که ما یه بیماری خب دوست دارم یه دختر داشته باشم توی یه تسلام یا با پسره میخوام با دختره میخوام ارزا بشم تو روشن کنی یا میخوای زن باشی یا میخوای مرد باشی مجبوری برای این که زندگی بکنی این حالت رو بپذیری خواهی بسید خواهی بسید چی باید میشه که اینا بیانی جا خودشون رو بگن زن بکنن یا مرد بکنن من مجبورم به خاطر اینکه خانوادم قبول نمی کنن ولی به خاطر اینکه بخوام زندگی تو اینجا بالاخره ایرانی هم بخوام زندگی بکنم بگیم دارم من دوست دارم اینجوری هم که دیگه این مدل به زمان مدل میذارم میگنش رفتار میکنم دیگه نمیشه این کارا سلام علیکم بعد میگی اینجا که من حق کار ندارم حق زندگی ندارم تو محیط مردا میرم اذیت جنسی میکنن آدم بعد مسخرت میکنن که محیط زن هم که سر بار نمیتونم برم چون حوییت ندارم تو هم اگر اینجا نبودی عمل میکردی ایران پلیز ویلکم میدیا ایدیتر فر دی اکانومیست گوتی اپستاین هلو هلو اگن Uh, I'm your chauffeur for, chauffeur for some of the afternoon here. Um, uh, our next uh, speaker that I'm going to introduce uh, is Tana Zashagian, a documentary filmmaker. Um, and she uh, is responsible for the film that you just saw a, a bit, a couple minutes from just now. So please welcome Tana. Um, so what a remarkable documentary for me full of Uh, I mean, I learned a lot from it, full of surprises. Um, let's just start right with why you wanted to do it in the first place. What, what brought you to this project? Um, hi. <laughs> oh, and hello. Yeah. <laughs> I, I read an article in the New York Times about uh, gender reassignment surgery in Iran. And it was a very um, positive article about wow, isn't this amazing? You wouldn't think in the Islamic Republic of Iran, sex changes are legal. And yet, um, you, know, you know that homosexuality is illegal. And being Iranian, I was like, this cannot, this just, there's something here that is going to shine a light on how this larger culture understands gender because This, it's, it's so different what's happening here. So that really interested me. And I had made a film previously about my family trying to marry me off before I pickle. <laughs> And so I was interested in like, you know, how people um, see you based on your gender, obviously. Because that was also like, you know, I was 25, I'm Iranian, I'm in America. And they started panicking. Right. And so I was like, what am I going to do? I'm gonna, I have to make, I'm going to make a film because I don't know what else to do. So. Uh, it felt kind of like, oh my God, these people are even, they're even transgressing the norms more than my little like attempt to not marry in a traditional way. Like they're really um, the people at the margins. Right. And I always, I believe that you understand a society by looking at the margins, you know? Like, yeah, you certainly get that from this. And I believe we saw in that clip a little bit of uh, a character, actually someone who you didn't have a lot of access to, the, the type of character for this documentary, which is um, uh, a woman who's transitioning into a man. Because uh, most of the documentary follows a couple cases of men, uh, men transitioning into women. Can you tell us a little bit about why, uh, why that was more difficult to get? Yeah, um, I absolutely. It was really, it's very interesting. So. Um, I, I go to this clinic in Iran where um, most of the sex changes are happening 
and I'm, I'm in the waiting room and all these um, men who want to have a sex change come in and all these women who want to have a sex change. And I'm talking to them and I'm talking to them. And I notice that the women who are interested in tr becoming men are like one after the other not open to being filmed, except this one that is in the beginning of the film, but then she wouldn't let me continue. And I realized... And I talked to the doctor, and you know, and I'm Iranian, so I kind of sort of knew why. And you know, like the doctor goes to me, well, I mean, they're becoming men. Like this is, you know, the family will be somewhat proud. They will transition. Everybody will accept them. The family will probably not disown them. I'm not saying these families are excited. They'd rather not have this issue. But relatively, it's like, OK, so we will have a son. Right. And you know, then I remember the doctor going on and on about how these girls that become men are even more manly than real men. They run factories, blah, 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 blah. So, and then he went on and on about how the, um, the, the men that are becoming women are sort of shameful and an embarrassment and, hmm. you know, like the way they move and blah, blah, blah. And so I, I was like, There's, this is why no one who is transitioning to become a man will talk to me because they're just going to fit right in. No one's going to know, and they don't want to press on it. Right. Whereas the ones that are becoming women, they already know they're going to stick out. So, you know, why not tell the story? And your documentary, which I highly recommend, you can find... Uh the BBC version of it on YouTube um, is it follows uh, in detail the cases of two uh, men transitioning uh, to become women, and they have quite um, kind of divergent cases of uh, how they where they end up. Um, can you tell us a little bit why you know about that following that? How they end up? Yeah. yeah. So um, w one of them is uh, a young man. He's like 25, Ali Asghar, and his family um, disowned him. He's from a, a, a village. The family's religious. He came to the big city, Tehran, to find a cure. And um, they, they disowned him. The father actually tried to poison him with rat poisoning, uh, but he caught on and didn't drink it. And so there was just no room for a son to then, you know, become a, a woman. There's just right. no room for that. So they disowned him, and he came to Iran. He had the sex change, and I went back a year later to film him, and he'd become a prostitute, which was quite a, a pretty normal trajectory for these men who are you, they were usually, for the most part, sort of lower middle class from rural areas that were coming to Tehran. I noticed, like, the middle class or upper middle class Tehranis, like, they usually would have an aunt or something in Paris, and they would just, like, send the kid to Paris and be like, just right. go do whatever you want. Don't shame us, but just go. But these were folks who don't have those resources. Yeah. So um, they're trying to figure out a way to live in Iran. And... Um, you were comparing, so there's Alyaska and Anusha. This is Anusha. You're oh, right, about, okay. Right? <laughs> yeah, and so in the other case, what was struck me about Alyaska's, you were talking about Anusha just now, right? Um, no, Alyaska. Alyaska, sorry. No, it struck me about Anusha's case. So Anush is the other main character yeah. that I found. And her father had died years ago, which I think is key here. And the mother being that there was no father who is, you know, the person that sort of keeps the honor of the family and it would offend his pride and his place, right. whatever. He was dead. So she didn't disown her child. And I actually texted with her two weeks ago. She was sending me pictures. Fine. Lives with her mom. Taking care of her mom, you know. What was interesting to me is she, she, she did, she actually, it was a journey for her too. You know, she, she wasn't happy in the beginning, but by 
uh, by the time that she's transitioning or has transitioned, she's like, well, you know, when I was pregnant with Anoush, I wanted a daughter. I wanted a girl, right? Yeah, she was making herself comfortable. She had rationalized it yeah. and made herself very comfortable with it. And the reason she wanted a girl was she thought a son would abandon her. Basically, and, right, that was what she was. Yeah, when t telling herself that's what she was telling yeah. herself. Someone would get married, leave the house. Um, it was a really interesting way to, to an insight into into that development. Um, also, near the end of the film, so Anush had a boyfriend, a very good-looking boyfriend, and so she transitioned, and he seemed to be sort of like not interested. <laughs> right. Right. And the mom, I'm filming this, and the mom is like saying to him, you know, she's a girl now, so you either have to marry her or get out of here. There's no room for this, you know, right. dating bull. Yeah. Like, this is not happening. She's a proper girl now, and you need to step up to the plate. And this was like happening in front of the camera, and I was, I was amazed by it. Was Such like, a real moment. The far bigger issue for, for the mother was not the transition, but not getting married. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you gotta get married and set up a house and... Yeah. Um, uh, I wanna make sure that we get to, I, I feel like there sh should be questions for this one, uh, but we'll see. <laughs> um, uh, I wanna open it up, give you a chance, and I have a question I can ask in between if, if uh, if no one is, if everybody's too shy still, but here we go. There's a, can, so, can we get over there? Hello. Um, so I, I haven't seen the movie, but it, it looked like one of the key themes were that the women who were having the um, gender reassignment surgeries didn't necessarily want to, so they were not identifying as trans, they just wanted to be gay women. So I don't know if I was reading that properly, but it kind of looked like that in the documentary. What do you think of that? Well, that's, that's what I was sort of um, saying in the beginning. When you're in a society where sex changes are allowed, but homosexuality is punishable by death, and there's n really very little tolerance of homosexuals, especially in the lower middle class or the middle class world. Like, um, there's just, you know, it's just kind of a beyond sin. And so um, it's, it's, I, I started noticing while I'm filming that it's like a solution to find a, somehow a, way, a, very, a very weird, the, the, the solution doesn't work, but it's like, it's some attempt to continue living in Iran and align your gender and your sexual needs with the like the proper traditional gender like it's it's not we like if they were here most of these guys and they said this to me they wouldn't have a sex change like there's no you know it's not the way we approach it where it's about your identity this is really more about who you want to sleep with. It's an amazing kind of moment early, very early on. You learn right away about this, or that there's some sort of difference here about the attitudes towards, towards transition surgery in, in Iran. You don't know why yet, but the, the doctor that you saw briefly in the clip uh, estimates that he does 10 times more of these surgeries in Iran than he would be doing in Europe. So that's, that's pretty amazing. There's another question back there. And uh, if we have time, we'll get to you in the front. Thanks. Um, There's a mic right there. Thanks. Uh, my name's, uh, whoops, sorry, Adrian Bruni. I'm with a news website called Aussie.com. Uh, and uh, so I read the same New York Times article a couple of years ago. And what I'm wondering is, I've traveled also in Nigeria, uh, where it is a crime to be gay. Or, and there are people in, in jail for that. And I'm wondering, uh, and I've asked very co many questions of corporations and so on, like, w since we're at a corporate conference, like, what can be done for corporations to sort of put pressure or do anything about getting these laws changed 
so that people don't have to go to such extreme measures um, you know, to, to just fit in or, or yeah. In um, Iran? Yeah, or. We don't really have a relationship with Iran. There's not like we can do anything, you know? Well, there, we just, I mean, there are like European businesses that do, um, that oh, are no. very openly LGB, pro LGBT in European countries and uh, U.S. companies that are very pro LGBT in in this country, but when when it they ha their satellite operations are in Iran or in Nigeria or in Uganda, like it mums the word. Uh, so I mean, I spoke with a German corporation in Nigeria when I was there who said. You know, we just don't engage. Have you really. have you encountered interest from uh, companies on this issue that do business in Iran? No. There's there's too much money at stake for. Right. You know. What what is uh, we're running out of time and I'm so, sorry if we'll talk about it, but uh, what is what's up next for you? What are you working on? Or um, I have two projects I'm cooking up. There's a, a possible film that hopefully will get made soon about. Um, so I heard of women in Afghanistan are smuggling themselves into Iran in search of breast cancer treatment because there's like one breast cancer center in all of Afghanistan or two. Mm. And they're illegally smuggling themselves into Iran because it's kind of like um, relatively you know, modern and mm -hmm. they have facilities. And then these charities help them. And if it's not too late, they often are saved, but sometimes they're not, and I, I thought that that's worth doing a film on because it might actually change something in Afghanistan. And then I had this other idea of doing a documentary on Leona Helmsley. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Um, I'd like to see the, uh, go, the GoFundMe for that one. Um, uh, uh, Tana, uh, thank you so much thank for you. your time. And uh, thank you.